Jamal Adams is now a Seattle Seahawk. Today we are going to talk about that trade, discuss who got the best deal, and maybe even talk about some hidden fantasy impacts made by this move. Be sure to stay tuned, be sure to like this video, share this video on social media, and subscribe to this channel. And if you have any fantasy questions or comments, put them in the comment section and I will answer them on the next video. We do have several questions today. Uh, we'll start off with one by Climax TV, who has the Broncos going 11 and 5. He says the defense is top 5. They have the best they got the best wide receiver in this draft. They have a solid running game. The offense is going to be efficient and the defense is going to be trouble. Chiefs better watch out because if the Broncos start off with a head of steam, they can win the division. I'm not sure about the division. I, I still think that is the Chiefs division. I think it's the Chiefs conference right now. But I am very high on the Broncos. I had them going 9-7. and seven, But 10-6, and 11-5 record really wouldn't surprise me. Uh, the offensive line, we'll see if Garrett Bowles can become anything. But I trust Mike Munchak with that line. I think they maybe should have brought in another piece through the draft um, in the middle rounds. Maybe a Sadiq Charles would have been a nice pick. And Ezra Cleveland may not have been an awful choice. Uh, but... Overall, I, I still trust Mike Munchak with this unit. I think they will be Im much improved this year. Uh, and then if you look at the skill position players, they have all the pieces you need. Cortland Sutton's a budding star. Jerry Judy and KJ Hamler, two uh, exciting young rookies. De they still have Deshaun Hamilton. We'll see if he can bring anything um, on the outside as well. And then they have two young tight ends, Noah Fant, who showed a lot of promise towards the end of last year, showed a good rapport with Drew Locke. And Albert Okobunum, who was Drew Locke's teammate, at Missouri. And, you know, in the running back, they brought in Melvin Gordon. And they also have Philip Lindsay and Royce Freeman. So they, they're loaded at the skill positions. The offensive line is the only concern. And I do trust Mike Munchak. So I will say, I mentioned Drew Locke on several videos as a late round sleeper, a guy that I think uh, can win you leagues possibly uh, because of the high upside that he brings. But, you know, 11 and 5 isn't, you know, out of this world. A lot of people are really down on Denver. I don't really see them being that bad. I trust Drew Locke and I trust Mike Munchak, and that's why I trust this team. So thank you for the comment. Uh, be sure to keep those comments coming. Feel free to comment anytime. Skeptical fan, it looks like a Cowboys fan, said, Go Cowboys. Them boys are great. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he says, we went to the playoffs in 2018 with Rob Frederick because on the NFC East video, I made a comment on how uh, losing Travis Frederick, the offensive line's not going to be as good. And that's true. I think you guys can still be a playoff team. I gave you guys the division. I picked you guys to win the division. But I don't think you guys can win by your offensive line anymore. You guys, it used to be, you know, you could win games, you know, just pounding the ball, you know, taking over. Uh, in the trenches. I don't think you can do that anymore. doesn't mean your offensive line is going to be terrible, though. Um, you guys have better skill positions. You guys can throw the ball more, and you probably will in Mike McCarthy's offense. Uh, so that doesn't, it's not, not necessarily totally a bad thing, uh, but I'm still curious to see what happens. I think Tyler Biotich deserves a chance at that starting job, but we'll see what happens. Uh, thank you for that comment. He also says, Big Ben won't stay healthy this season. That's a, the attitude of a typical Cowboys fan. Um, I disagree because Ben is in really good shape right now. I think the offensive line will bounce back some. Uh, I, they were atrocious last year, but part of it was just bad quarterback play. With Ben coming back, I think they're going to try their hardest to protect them. We'll give Sean Serrett another year, the new offensive line coach, uh, see what he can do. Uh, but, you know, you never know with Ben's health. But I'm optimistic right now with his health. So thank you very much for those comments. Keep them coming. We also have... One from Reynos, if I mispronounced that, sorry about that. Uh, on the NFC North video, he commented, uh, here's what I see, Packers 10-6. and six. That's pretty reasonable. This one's a little bit surprising. The Lions 9-6-1, he said, or 10-6, and 9-7. and seven. Uh, Adds a little bit too high for me right now, but I'm not saying it can't happen. That offense was really good. Daryl Bevel and Matt Stafford, they had that offense going last year and stuff. Kenny Galladay, I think this year is going to prove himself as, you know, one of the elite young receivers in this game. Uh, we'll see if Kerryon Johnson, DeAndre Swift can hold the load in the backfield. I'm still not sold on the offensive line. Uh, I like Tyrell Crosby at left tackle, uh, but i still a little bit hesitant about the signing of Halepulavati Vitae. Uh, he's a very willful pass protector. Um, and they ended up losing uh, Graham Glasgow on the inside. So still a little bit shaky in the offensive line. Defense still has a long ways to go. Hopefully Jeff Okuda can turn things around uh, with that uh, defense, but I'm still not sold on it. They need to get better pass rush. Maybe uh, second-round pick Julian Aquara can come in and do that. Uh, 
he also has the Vikings going 8-8. Eight and eight. Uh, I'm higher on the Vikings than that. I know some people are down on them, and I know they lost a lot on the defense, but they still have a good young pair of safeties, and they still have a pretty good defensive line led by Daniil Hunter, who's one of the most underrated defensive line in the game. Defensive linemen in the game. Um, then he has the Bears going seven and nine. So honest, I mean, the Lions' prediction was a little bit bold, uh, but the only thing I really disagree with is probably the Vikings. I think that sh should probably have them a little bit higher. Uh, but I like the prediction. Um, it's a little bit different, but, you know, you never know. It's going to be a crazy year, I think. Uh, so thank you for those questions, y'all. Keep them coming. Let's get into this Jamal Adams trade. I was actually at work when this went down. I got an alert um, and found out on my lunch break, or uh, actually just on one of my breaks, that Jamal Adams had been traded. The Seahawks got two first-round picks. It kind of surprised me by that just because there were some talks, you know, you know with his – it's harder to trade disgruntled players. Let's put it that way. I know from Antonio Brown and stuff, okay, he only got like a third and a fifth round pick. You know, for at that time, one of the best receivers in the game. When a player's disgruntled, you don't usually get as much in return as you would like. So, you know, there are some talks, you know, maybe they'll only get a second round pick for Jamal Adams in return. So getting two first round picks was really a really nice grab by the Jets. Now, for the short term, I think that's really, that's really hurts them. I think... Adam Gase needed to win this year. I think that puts that out of the way. I think the Jets' defense could be among or maybe the absolute worst in the league. Uh, they don't have much of a pass rush now. They don't have anyone in the secondary. Uh, I think the offense will be better this year. Um, we'll get into fantasy impacts of this move in just a minute. But if you look at the Seahawks, uh, I've, I've been a, I was not a fan of this pass draft. I like Jordan Brooks, their first-round pick, but that was a little bit of a reach to me. Uh, and then after that, you know, a lot of very head-scratching picks. I just didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, but if you look at what uh, the front office has done, John Schneider has done, uh, they've been very aggressive. Schneider likes to trade back very often uh, to gain draft capital. The next two years, he's going to be without a first-round pick, so I expect that trend to continue. Uh, but if you're looking for the immediate, you know, the Seahawks obviously believe that they're in a position to win now. I think this move puts them uh, in contention immediately for Super Bowl. I had them finishing second place, tied for second with the Arizona Cardinals in this division. I think that moves them ahead of the Cardinals now um, and possibly even ahead of the 49ers because uh, I want to take a look, closer look at this secondary. Because ever since the Legion of Boom, you know, had departed and stuff, you know, they had haven't had a whole lot of success in the secondary. Shaquille Griffin's been very up and down. Uh, Trey Flowers, a six foot three corner from Oklahoma State, uh, he sh showed some promise at times. They have Quentin Dunbar, Brian Allen. Uh, you know, they have some bodies there, but they still are lacking at the corner position. I don't think they have a true number one. Um, I think they just have maybe Flowers could be arguably a number two. Griffin's probably a number two on most teams, but they don't have a number one corner. Now, Adams can come downhill, and he can also press and play a little bit of corner if need be. Uh, so I think that helps the corners out. Plus, I think the one that may be benefit the most from this move is Quandre Diggs. The Seahawks trade for him from the Lions last year was probably an awful move by the Lions, if you think about it. He was a big part of the Lions' defense, a uh, very nice contributor, and he played really well after the trade last year uh, from the Lions to the Seahawks. Uh, so I think that his success is going to continue with Jamal Adams there. The safeties are really good there. Um, if you look at the front seven, a lot of unknowns. This defense is very young. You know, Ben Burke, Irvin, I know a lot of people really liked him coming out. Uh, Bruce Irving, he's the one veteran they have there. I don't know how much he's going to really bring. Um, uh, I believe they still have K.J. Wright there. Yeah, they have K.J. Wright. Um, and hopefully Jordan Brooks can come in and bring some immediate uh, help. Of course, Bobby Wagner being there. Of course, he's, you know, the leader. Uh, so I think the linebacking core is going to be okay. Uh, but the defensive line, i still not sure if they're going to get pressure. Uh, you know, there were talks made they signed Jadeveon Clowney. Uh, they didn't. Uh, they have LJ Collier, second year from TCU. He wasn't known as a pass rusher really coming out. He showed he, he flashed at the combine last year and as pro day. Uh, that really bumped up his stock. But overall... He's not much of a pass rusher. Rasheem Green is a guy I would like to see break out. Uh, he is back, uh, I believe this is his fourth year in the league out of USC. Uh, he, I really liked him coming out of college. Showed some nice pass rush ability. Not a bunch of bend around the edge, but had a pretty good power, good upper body strength, 
in a good pad level. I'm just not sure if that's going to turn into production in terms of sacks and quarterback pressures. Uh, Alton Robinson, the rookie from Syracuse, uh, very inconsistent. Daryl Taylor, also very inconsistent. Wasn't a fan of that pick. Like I said, did not like the Seahawks draft. They do have some good defensive tackles. Demarcus Christmas is intriguing. Puna Ford, uh, former uh, star at uh, Texas, uh, he was a nice find for them in the later rounds. They still have Jerron Reed there, but none of these guys are going to be, you know, like double-digit sack guys. They're going to have to get some pressure from their linebackers. Jordan Brooks isn't a huge blitzer. Bobby Wagner, he can, but he's that's not really what he's known for blitzing. K.J. Wright can blitz, but they're going to have trouble getting pressure on the quarterback, I'm afraid, and I know Pete Carroll likes to send a lot of people. You know, they'll blitz a lot. They'll send six, seven men a lot, uh, but like I said, I'm not sure if the corners can hold up. Jamal Adams can hold down one side, and Diggs is pretty good uh, cover safety, but if you look at the corners, they're not, they, don't have a whole lot of ver- they don't have a lot of versatility. If you look at all their corners, they're all over six feet tall. They have no agile speed um, slot corners, I should say. That they, they're all built as outside corners. You know, just looking at Brian Allen, six foot three, two fifteen. Uh, you got Jason Stanley, six foot two, two oh seven. Uh, Shaquille Griffin, six foot one ninety eight. Trey Flowers, six three, two oh three. Quentin Dunbar, six two. They have a bunch of these tall corners and stuff. And I know they're going to play a lot of zone press type schemes. Um, and that may uh, allow the safeties to play a little bit more free, but I I don't know how they're going to cover underneath. Um, Jordan Brooks will probably have to help in that department as well. They're going to have to get help from the linebackers in coverage, but I'm just not sure if this corner group can hold up. Um, And if you look at the other top teams in the NFC, you're looking New Orleans, Tampa Bay, possibly Dallas, Minnesota Green Bay. I mean, the NFC, there's a lot of good teams, but we don't know how elite the Saints are, and we don't know how elite Tampa Bay can be uh, with you know all of the change in a shortened offseason. So I, I'm still not sure. I'm not ready to call them, you know, they should become one of the favorites, but I think they are now contenders for the Super Bowl, whereas before, I'm thinking, you know, maybe a wild card playoff team. I think this does do a lot for the defense. It takes some pressure off the corners, may allow the sec- the front seven a little bit more time to get to the quarterback, but overall, I don't think it's going to make a huge um, difference in terms of playoff run. I'm not sure. I think this gives them a better chance in their division, uh, but once you get the playoffs... I don't know how big of an impact this is going to have. You have to have corners that can cover. I'm not sure how long the safeties will be able to hold up. Um, but to the fantasy impact of this, and this is something I want to get into. Nobody, you know, Jamal Adams is a defense player. How does this translate to fantasy? Well, the Jets now are officially have one of the worst defenses in the league. You know, there was some upside because you had Adams there. Uh, you know, you had some pieces working. Uh, C.J. Mosley at linebacker, Quinnen Williams on the defensive line. You had something on every level of the defense. Uh, but with Adams gone, the secondary is awful. Quinnen Williams uh, got, into some tr- got into some trouble off the field. And, you know, C.J. Mosley was only okay last year. This defense is going to be awful, okay? Um, and I think if you're looking for a fancy impact, that means they're going to be throwing the ball more. It means possibly stock up for Sam Darnold if he can keep the turnovers down. Uh, but I think the thing that impacts this the most is it is now stocked down on Le'Veon Bell. And here's why. I want to look up his numbers real quick. I'm going to put up his numbers here. Look at Le'Veon Bell, his last four weeks, okay, it was really inconsistent towards the end of last year. Start At the start of the year, start off really slow. He only had three touchdowns the entire year rushing. Uh, week 13 against Cincinnati, uh, 32 rushing yards, 35 receiving yards. Nothing against Minnesota, he was out. Uh, against Baltimore, 87 rushing yards. Against the Steelers, week 16, 72 rushing yards, 21 receiving yards. And I know he's a receiving back and can do a lot as a receiver, but in non-PPR formats... I don't know. I mean, I was really high on Le'Veon Bell as a mid-round pick. You know, I like the upside. The offensive line is going to be better. But now, I don't I don't trust the defense to hold anyone. I, I really don't. And I think this is what it hurts the most. I really think it hurts Le'Veon Bell. I think that puts a red flag up by Bell. Um, because the upside was already limited last year because he didn't have any help. 
This year, we were hoping the offensive line, you know, they brought in Mekhi Becton, George Fant. Uh, they brought in uh, they brought in a couple pieces at guard. The offensive line should be better. But if they can't get out to leads early, I don't know if they're ever going to catch up now. I think this puts them probably in a fight for last place with the Dolphins now. It, it, the Jets really... I don't want to say they lost the trade in the long term because two first-round picks is a good move. They looked okay because Jamal Adams has kind of forced his way out. You could also argue that Adam Gase forced him out uh, because a lot of people have been very unhappy with Adam Gase. But at the end of the day, I th think two first-round picks is a nice return. For the Seahawks, they're immediate contenders. So in the me in the, for immediate help, the Seahawks are obviously helped by this. In the long term, the Jets... Uh, look good, but I don't think either necessarily lost from it. But I think Le'Veon Bell loses more than anyone in this deal for, from a fantasy perspective because they're not going to be able to run the ball as more. And Adam Gase has also talked about not using Bell as much, maybe hoping to maybe get the production back up. Um, but I really don't think that's him. Bell can carry the workload, but he has to have a better offensive line. And I think they will have that this year. But you got to throw to keep up with the other team if you're behind. And I'm afraid that's what's going to happen with the New York Jets this year. So that's going to do it for today. Be sure to like this video, share this video on social media, does wonders, and subscribe to this channel. If you got any fancy questions, put them in the comment section, and I will answer them on the next video. We will be continuing this upcoming week. We will be finishing off our division previews. We still have the AFC South and the AFC North. We'll get into both of those this week. Hope you'll tune in then. Thanks for watching.